Now, we've covered this concept of expectation and expecting abundance. What we really want to do is raise our level of awareness so the expectation becomes a natural state for our mind to be in. And we've already mentioned that expectation is a mindset. It's a mental state. And you're going to find that that state comes to you with an increase of awareness. Now, in talking about the law of vibration, we're starting off here saying the law of vibration explains the difference between mind and matter, between the physical state and the non-physical state of everything in the universe, which includes you. So we're talking about the non-physical, and here we're, the non-physical, and here we're talking about the physical. Now, this non-physical part of our personality is where the mental magic starts to take place. We call these our creative tools. They're mentioned in an earlier lesson under the heading of intellectual factors. And it's the intellectual factors that we want to develop. And in developing them, what we do is raise our level of consciousness. Now you come back here, we say, under the law of vibration, we find that everything vibrates, nothing rests. Everything is in a constant state of motion. There is no such thing as inertia. From the mental to the grossest form of matter, all is in vibration. This lectern is made of, I suppose we would call it lucite. However, it appears to be solid, but it's really not. If you look under a microscope, you'll see particles of energy moving. And of course, that would be the same with every physical form that you might look at under a microscope. Now, we say graduating between the lowest and the highest form of vibration there are literally millions of cells or levels of vibration. Rates of vibration are known as, known as frequency. The higher the frequency, the more potent it becomes. Thought being one of the highest forms of vibration and very potent in nature should certainly be understood. Now, I have mentioned in many, many seminars that thought waves are cosmic waves that penetrate all time and all space. It's not an accident if you happen to be wandering down the Champs-Élysées in Paris or maybe Oxford Street in London, England, and a loved one may be sitting in Colorado Springs and they're really concentrating. Something has happened at home and they really want you to phone home. All of a sudden, you get a feeling you should phone home. Now, what did we say feeling was? Vibration. Their thought waves are in resonance or in harmonious vibration on the same frequency as certain cells in your brain. And as that thought wave of theirs strikes your brain cells, it sets up a vibration in you. You call that a feeling. You've got a feeling you should phone home. And you phone and they'll say, oh, thank goodness you phone. We've been wanting to talk to you. Do you think that's an accident? Again, it's the same thing when uh, you pick up the phone to phone someone. You haven't touched the dial. Uh, the phone hasn't rang, and yet the other person's on the other end. We put that off as coincidence, and we laugh about it. It's an absolute law. You are in tune with the other person. Now, we started out yesterday morning with a glass of water. In the earliest lesson, we were coming under and talking about these three parts of our personality, and then we related it to energy. I held up a glass of water. And I said, in the state of vibration it was in, the energy was called water. Then we talked about heating the water. We called the same energy steam. It wasn't water any longer. And then we continued to heat the energy, and then we called it air, ether, or gas. It was the same energy. Now, let's let these lines here represent levels of vibration, or we could refer to them a different way, levels of consciousness. Now, we're going to take this bottom line and make it a little heavier. We'll put a couple of arrows on it. And then we will write the word self. Now, I would suggest that in your exercise book, on the opposite page to the law of vibration and attraction, that you make a drawing like this. Now, underneath, we'll write the word simple.
Now, everything below this line is going to be referred to as a simple conscious state. This line is referred and everything above as a self stage of consciousness. Now, what we're dealing with are levels of vibration in consciousness. An animal is in a simple state of consciousness. We could have a little dog here on the set and the dog would know it's on the set, but it doesn't know it knows it. A dog operates, as you and I do, with sensory factors and they are to help the person communicate with their outside world but they're not operating with any intellectual factors, they operate with instinct, which is perfect. So the dog knows and yet knows not. It's able through its sensory factors to look at its outside world, but not able to look at its inner world. You and I have the creative ability of looking at our inner world and we're in what we call a self-conscious state. We are aware of our objective as well as our subjective world. Now there are many varying degrees of consciousness until you reach the higher state which is called divine or cosmic. Use whatever word you choose. It's divine or cosmic consciousness. All religions that have maintained their balance over any period of time are founded on the premise that we will one day be one with our maker. We will reach this higher or divine conscious state we will be aware of our oneness with this power. Now you're going to find individuals who have a very low level of consciousness. They're way down here. Therefore, they have a very low level of what we call awareness. Now the awareness dictates how that person lives. When I, ever I mention this, I think of the first time I uh, had an occasion to go down to the Loop or downtown Chicago. I was living in Glenview and I went down the Eden's Expressway and as I was going along Michigan Avenue I saw people laying right in the gutter. They were absolutely filthy. Now these people were virtually living in an animalistic state, almost. And you would say, well, they're stupid. No, they're not stupid. Some of these people have degrees. Some may have a doctorate's degree or an MBA. What they have is a low level of consciousness. They could have a highly developed intellect know a lot here, but still in a low vibration. They're not living there because they want to, they're living there because they do not know. They are not aware of how to change it. You will find then individuals, some are up in years, some are fairly young, that have a very high level of consciousness. They're not away down here with their consciousness. They have a very high level of consciousness and they have a very, very high level of awareness. Now, these people have a phenomenal vibration. Their energy, you feel so good around them. There's something about them that you're attracted to. You're not quite sure what it is. You see, you couldn't articulate on it because it's vibration. You very rarely see these people upset. You very rarely see them excited or depressed. They have learned how to maintain a magnificent balance. Everything they do, they seem to do very, very well. They're very creative. They know how to get results. They know how to stay on track and not let the suggestions that are coming from their outside world knock them off track. Now, you and I live somewhere between here and here, and yet no not. Now, let's suppose a person is on this level of consciousness. The only thing that person could attract is what's on that level or on that frequency. Consciousness, vibration, frequencies, we're talking about the same thing. If a person is earning, let's say, $25,000 a year, they're not earning 25 because they want 25. They're earning 25 because they are not aware of how to earn 50. If a person's suffering with headaches, they're not suffering with headaches because they want headaches. They're suffering from headaches because they're not aware of how to eliminate the headaches. If a person is alone and lonely, they're not alone and lonely because they want to be. They're alone and lonely because they're not aware of how to change it. Now, what you and I are really seeking is a higher level of awareness. And you know, that's what we're gaining as we're studying this material. The more often you watch this, the more you're raising your level of consciousness. Now, what you're really doing is raising your level of awareness. 
And we're going to get to the point where we're very, very tuned in. We say the law of vibration could be explained in many ways for various purposes. In this seminar, it is our intention to confine it to thoughts, uh, an effort to improve the quality of our life. Now, I'm just going to touch on the first couple of pages, and then John's going to come up and tie this in on this board to goals. Because that's what we really want to know. We want to know how does reaching the goal and the awareness of vibration, how do they connect? Where's the, uh, where's the connection there? Well, the more we understand this, the more we'll understand what I'm saying here. Because everything vibrates. So what we want to do is get into harmonious vibration with whatever good we desire. We say here on the bottom of page 41, third paragraph in the bottom, for you to grasp a clear understanding of how you can actually take dominion over your results, to understand how and why thoughts and things come into your life as they do, you must go back to this basic premise which we started with in the very first lesson where I held the glass of water and talked about the energy. We called it water, we called it steam, we called it air, ether, or gas. It was the same energy, it was just altering its level of vibration. Now we say energy is neither created nor destroyed. All science and all theology have taught us that for, let's say for the past 6,000 years at least in recorded history. Now, everything is merely in a constant state of vibration being manifest in all varying degrees of vibration. We have the ability to alter the vibratory rate of anything. I could take and alter the vibratory rate of this lectern, call it lucite, I could turn it into air, ether, or gas. I did that yesterday with a dollar bill. Just one minute it was paper, boom, the next minute it was air. I had the choice, I had the ability to do that because I'm a creative being. I do have dominion over. Well, now we know that with simple little things, let's use it for higher things. We say with free will and the other many, many mental factors we possess, in our marvelous mind, you have the co-creative ability to cause vibratory change to take place as you choose. If I'm not feeling good, negative vibration, I can switch the idea in my mind, all of a sudden I'm feeling good, positive vibration. How's that controlled? It's controlled by the various ideas that I will choose to entertain to, from time to time, I'll build here and plant here. Because whatever goes in here dictates the vibration my mind-body is in. And we must understand mind-body are one and the same, not two, not two. Now with free will, reason is one intellectual factor, will is another intellectual factor. Reason gives us freedom, and the will gives us the ability to lock into an idea and control our vibration. And stay in the vibration we must be in to attract something that's already here. It's like the way to fly the airplane was already here. We say the lack of ability to exercise this tremendous power for good is caused by ignorance. Now remember I put knowledge over here and I said through study you develop understanding. Let's look at the polar opposite. Through ignorance a person gets into a state called worry or doubt. They don't have the understanding of how to change vibration. They don't have the understanding of how to control what's going on on the inside by blocking out what's going on on the outside. Now, if a person is in this psychic state, that's called a mental disease, they're worried. They think they're not going to get what they need to look after what they say they have to look after. That worry, when it's impressed and changed into an emotional state, it then turns into something that's more commonly referred to as fear. That fear energy has to be expressed through the only instrument it can be expressed through the physical body. Instantly and automatically, the body moves into a vibration more commonly known as anxiety. Now, the anxiety we usually treat with Valium. However, we have not looked after the cause, we're treating the effect. And the anxiety, of course, moves into disease, which moves into decay. It's like St. Clair Lewis one time said, we don't die, we kill ourselves. What's the polar opposite to this? Well, with an understanding of this, of this law, of this expectant concept that we've discussed, with what John's going to tie in here now to our goals, you never have to worry about whether you're going to reach your goal. Through the repetition of hearing and studying and watching and learning this information, you'll never fear whether you're going to get there. Because you see, understanding gives us the ability, if we cannot see the positive circumstance on the outside, we can build it on the inside. 
That's why Napoleon said, circumstance, hell, I make them. George Bernard Shaw said, people are always blaming circumstance for what they are. He said, I don't believe in circumstance. The people who get on in this world are the people who get up, look for the circumstances they want, and if they can't find them, they make them. They have the understanding they can do that. And through doing that and getting emotionally involved, they then set up an emotional state that's quite opposite to fear. It's called faith. The faith must manifest on the physical plane as health or well-being. Now, this could be in our social life, could be a healthy body, healthy bank account, healthy business. Name it and claim it. So you can see it really makes a lot of sense to know how to take control of this. We say, let there be light. And there was light. Let, let there be light. You'll never force light. Light is consciousness. Force negates. Force only works on the physical plane of light. On the mental plane, you have to let it happen. You just let it flow into your consciousness. Flip over to page 42. Page is self-explanatory. I've been talking all the way along. I talked about the importance of environment. We were using uh, Nino's office as an example. It's got a lot of heavy hitters in there, big producers, positive people, people with high expectation, with real worthy goals. I introduced Grant Sylvester yesterday, and uh, I, I, I do a lot of work with their company. They got a big company. It's an effective company. That company started four years ago with financial planning centers. They have about 90 centers now across Canada. The first center started about four years ago in Moncton, New Brunswick. Don McKay and Fern Robichaux started that center. Most people would expect to maybe earn a profit in the first two or three years. They'd think that was pretty good. These two men earned a quarter of a million dollars the first year in business in Moncton, New Brunswick. Now, Moncton is not the economic capital of the world. How did they do it? It doesn't matter where you are outside. It's like Paul said, it's where you are inside. Don McKay and Fern Robichaux expect the best. Grant Sylvester and the executives in that company expect to attract people that want to open businesses, and they attract them. And the people are very successful. This page, 42, focuses on that. It talks about the positive and the negative personalities. We made yesterday, reference yesterday to Raymond Aaron's Millionaire's Club. He has attracted a group of people, every one of them want to learn to be a millionaire. He's a pretty good guy to teach them. The guy's a millionaire. How do you become a millionaire? Same way you can become or same way any of his people. Right thinking, right ideas. He has the ideas. You want to get them? Go to him. Does he give them to you for nothing? No. Servant's worth is higher. But it works. Why? Environment again. You're in tune. You're mixing with the right people. Now, if you're a negative person, in other words, you're choosing negative ideas, you're worrying, fear, and anxiety, you know the only thing you can attract? The people that are vibrating on that frequency. You're going to attract other negative people. Misery loves company. That's just isn't a cute saying. Birds of a feather flock together. Now, if you're a heavy hitter, understand this. Eagles don't flock. Sparrows do. Big difference. And the heavy hitters, they're all attracted to each other. They go to the same clubs. They take the same kind of vacations. They drive the same kind of cars. They live in the same neighborhoods. Now, if you're not one, how do you become one? Mix with them. You choose your environment. That's exactly what I did. 27 years ago, I was sitting in a bar here in Toronto. I used, that's where I used to spend most of my time and all my money that I could beg, borrow, and steal. I very rarely earned very much in those days. One day I picked up a glass and I looked at it and I looked around and I thought, they're all bums in here. <laughs> they were. Then I thought, geez, I must be a bum too because I'm always here. <laughs> I'm one of them. They're one of me. You know what I said? I put the glass down. I said, I'm never coming back as long as I live. And I never have. I never have. And strange thing, none of them have phoned to see how I am. That's almost 30 years ago. <laughs> they never missed me, did they, Mark? Never did. No, they don't even know I'm gone. <laughs> On page 43, 
We're talking about our connecting link. Slowly but deliberately see with your inner eye of understanding how you connect with the good that you desire. We say two objects whose electro electromagnetic fields are the same have the same frequency, therefore they are in resonance, in harmony, or have a rapport. When two objects are in resonance, or well within the same sphere of relative motion of each other, vibration can be transmitted from one to the other through the medium of the electron. Resonance is concerned with the electromagnetic field surrounding the objects. We find that a globe on a chandelier will vibrate in resonance with a certain key on the piano, yet it will not vibrate to any other key on the piano, just the one. Music is vibration, I think, isn't it, Scott? That's what it is. Why do you think music will make you feel so good sometimes? Why do you think music will get you jumpy and make you want to dance, you know? Why? Vibration. Affects cells in your brain, puts you in a new vibration, you want to act differently. Mm -hmm. There's some radio stations that you enjoy. They're in harmony with the way you think. There's some that drive you crazy. They're not in harmony with the way you think. <laughs> but there's a market for them all. <laughs> we say all electrical, on page 43, around the middle of the page, all electromagnetic waves or quantrums have their rate of frequency, which means the number of changes in direction per second. The electric wave spectrum is in a scale of vibration and is divided into regions. One must remember that these regions are not actual divisions, but merely arbitrary spaces covering frequencies that manifest in our senses in different ways, each region blending into both the one above and the one below, like we said, like the colors of a rainbow. Now we say the earth and the universe are all but degrees in one scale and are in their basic nature the same. The difference be solely a matter of degree or vibration all manifests of the same energy. Do you know that when you grasp this idea, all of your prejudices will disappear? It'll disappear. Just like the negative consciousness we're going to show you in the next lesson. They'll disappear. And you know why they'll disappear? Because of understanding. It's the removing of ignorance. Now read this last paragraph carefully. When the world understands this truth, that everything is an expression of the same thing. We will see that all people are the same. They only appear to be different. How do they appear to be different? They appear to be different to our physical senses, our lowest mental tools. The dividing lines are not borders, color or language, but ignorance. You attract whatever or whomever you are in harmonious vibration with. The results vary, the people remain the same. The results vary, the people remain the same. We may see a black man and a white woman, or a white woman and a black man. You know what I enjoy watching when I see that? I enjoy watching the people around, watch the expressions on their faces. The shock, the anger, the horror. Do you know what they're expressing? Ignorance. It's them that is in the bad vibration. We have got some real crazy ideas. How do we get these ideas? Well, I remember when I was a little boy, you know, in the little life that John talked about yesterday, I can remember my grandmother. She was a dear old lady. I loved her. I can remember her saying, well, they're Catholics, but they're nice people. <laughs> <laughs> On page 44. We say everything is an expression of the same thing. Now, we're repeating ourselves just different ways. But I want you to take time and read these paragraphs carefully. Re-listen to these tapes. Watch these videos over and over and over again. And tie it in with what we're saying here. And it's going to take on a different meaning. In the second paragraph, you are connected to everything in the universe and everything with you. Whether you can see it with the naked eye or not is unimportant. The only difference between one thing and another is in density or amplitude of vibration. That is the only difference. When you choose certain thoughts, brain cells are affected. They vibrate and send off electric waves. When you are concentrating on those thoughts, you increase the amplitude of vibration of those cells and the electric waves become much more potent. 
Do you want your thoughts to be more potent? Develop the willpower, the will, and the mental faculty. That gives you the ability to concentrate. I'll give you an analogy that you're all familiar with. It'll do exactly the same thing. You go outside on a nice sunny day, and you all did this from your little boys and little girls, and you take a magnifying glass. And you may have a piece of paper, some leaves, or you might even have your hand there. And you take the sun, and you put the magnifying glass between the sun and the object. And you can start a fire with it. How? You increase amplitude of vibration. The rays become much more potent. They become hotter. And like that, let's take a candle. And let's suppose I put a sign way over here on the wall. We turn out all the lights and I light the candle and ask you to read the sign. You'd say, I'm not able to. And I'd say, why? You'd say, there's not enough light. That would appear to be the correct answer, but it would be wrong. The reason you're not able to read the sign is because the light is not being directed at the sign. Now, if I took exactly the same candle power and I confined it in a flashlight and I held the flashlight towards the sign, you'd be able to read it with these. See, well, the candle's here. Some of the light's going on you, some on me, all over the place. But when I confine the same candle power to a flashlight, I'm marshalling the energy and I'm directing it towards a given point and it becomes much more powerful and you'll be able to read the sign with these. Enough light, misdirected. We got enough power, we misdirect it. We think of too many unimportant things. Our mind's shooting all over the place. The average individual would have more ideas running across their mind in a matter of a minute than you'd find in the Encyclopedia Britannica. Just total loss of control. Know that you are originating those electric waves and know that you are also determining the density of them by your own choice. You must also know that since you are originating these electric waves, your whole being is in that particular vibration. Now think. You're taking brain cells and you're causing them to increase in amplitude of vibration and you're sending off a powerful surge of energy. Do you know the only energy those brain cells can take on is the same energy it's sending off. The only energy those brain cells can take on is a like energy to that which you're sending off. You focus on the negatives in another person, what kind of energy do you think you're taking on? What kind of a vibration do you think you're in? It might be a wise idea to focus on the good aspects of even the worst situation. I could have got upset when the yo-yo string broke, or I could laugh at myself. I've got a choice. One time I wasn't able to laugh at myself. Now I frequently do. <laughs> Higher awareness. John always has. You know. <laughs> On page 45. Now page 45 deals with something we're all familiar with. We have had magnificent instruments that's been used in the medical profession for years. And these magnificent instruments do nothing but measure vibration. The brain, the heart. And they'll tell you whether you're healthy or whether you are moving into trouble. Do you know how they can tell? By the vibration you're in. By the vibration you're in. I remember one time years ago, I had to go for a stress test for insurance. I didn't particularly like the idea of going because it was time consuming and who wants to run on a conveyor belt for a half hour? They'd have you running up and down stairs and jumping up and off and down steps. And then they'd lay down and they'd wire you up. You see, they, they would put this electrocardiograph on you. And they would measure it and then they'd have you wait a few minutes and they'd measure it and then take a few minutes and take another reading, take a few minutes, take another reading. And of course you get on there and your heart's going blah, 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 And you're out of breath. I mean, you're just about worn out. Now, I have practiced relaxation, meditation, concentration for a long, long time. And rather than take a long time, because I was in a rush, I just instantly returned myself to a normal state. They called me a little while later. They said, you've got to come back for another stress test. The machine wasn't working right. <laughs> that's, that's the truth. And of course, there's a lot of people that are able to do that. You're quite able to do it. All you have to do is learn how. And we want to understand that the brain is that electronic instrument that controls the nervous system throughout the body, which is the electrical system in the body. You've heard of people having nervous breakdowns? No such thing. A person had a nervous breakdown, they'd be a puddle on the floor. The nervous system is the electrical system that keeps the body intact. They lose conscious control. Conscious control. This 
explains why on page 45. They do not understand how to control this magnificent electrical instrument that they live in. Your body is the most phenomenal object on planet Earth, in the cosmos as far as I'm concerned. We are truly creative beings in charge of our own world, and we're in charge because we can alter vibration. Alter vibration. Or as I was saying with Scott in the music, create new vibration. Color is vibration. You ever noticed if you wear a certain color, you feel better? They have found by ch painting hotel or uh, 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 hospital rooms, nice bright yellows and pinks, people get better, faster. Used to be cut well, so well, get well with the doctors. Well, now they're paint well, you know. I mean, big difference. Now, I'm going to ask you to turn over to page 46. And as you focus in on page 46, I'm going to ask that you focus on your goal. Get the thing that you want more than anything else riveted in your mind, and then take every bit of information that John focuses on on this board and relate it to the goal. Don't just listen to it as information. Let this information mean something to you. And take all the ideas that he's going to come across and direct it towards the object or the thing that you truly desire. Dr. Ken McFarlane, the late Dr. McFarlane, the great educator, he said anything's possible if the motivation is strong enough. You'll remember Heinz Dawes, how his circumstances were not too favorable. He thought he was going to lose his house. Well, Heinz was sitting in the seminar. His fantasy became a theory. Heinz's fantasy, even though he was having difficulty maintaining his home, was to drive a new Cadillac. And it was while he was sitting in the seminar that his fantasy literally became a theory. Heinz took that theory and turned it into a fact in a short 21-day period. I got my Cadillac uh, in 22 days after I made that promise to myself. There were certain things that Bob suggested. Um, we went to um, one of the dealers in Toronto and got half a dozen brochures. I cut out the page of the car which I wanted, which was a Coupe de Ville. I had one stuck in the bathroom, one of the dash of my old car, one in the kitchen, one in my attache case, one in the office, and one directly on the ceiling in our bedroom. You went, this, and sat in. Eh? you went and sat in there too. Yes, that was one of the other things. Try to get the senses involved as much as uh, you can. So Bob suggested that sit behind the car and pretend it's yours. Smell the leather. Um, have the air conditioning blow on you, listen to the stereo. We got the senses involved and this friend of mine took a picture of me in this car. I still have the picture. I also carried a little goal card with me that Bob suggested, so that every time I put my hands in my pocket, that mental picture was being recreated. I had never written so much business in such a short period of time, ever. And at that time, I was in the business uh, about 15 years. Mm -hmm. Many of the suggestions we make in the seminar may seem immature, they may seem childish. Heinz Dawes was a mature human being. He had been an insurance agent for 15 years, but he took the suggestions that we gave and he followed through on them. He literally got a photograph of himself sitting in an automobile. Now that photograph had a real impact on Heinz's brain and ultimately on his mind, and he accomplished that goal in a relatively short period of time. Right on the first page of your action planner, we recommend that you take a photograph of yourself and place it in this square. There's a photograph of yourself. There's a suggestion that you're born rich. You're a prosperous person. Now what we want to suggest is that you get a photograph of yourself with your goal. It might be a new home. Shop around. Pick out the place you like. Stand in front of it and get your photograph taken. Go and sit in an automobile. Get the picture of yourself, literally a physical picture, and hold that picture in your mind. Look at it as often as possible. Now, John Canary is going to talk to you about the importance of vibrations and goals. Vibration is everything. That's what the picture does. It puts you in the vibration. Listen to John.